RON ASTM D2699, octane number. Engine octane testing is based in measuring the compression needed to reach the point when the peak of the combustion process no longer occurs at the optimum moment. This moment is called engine knocking and is measured with the knockmeter. Comparing the sample by bracketing using standard reference fuels in a variable compression cylinder engine, we can determine the octane number of the sample. Bracketing is the principle behind octane engine testing and is based in measuring standard reference fuels, blended accurately for values either side of the expected sample value. To start the engine, one of the bowls that supply fuel to the carburetor is filled with warm-up fuel. The chiller is turned on, which cools the carburetor body and the bowl where the sample will be placed, using a refrigerant recirculation circuit. The oil level in the crankcase and the water level in the condenser are checked to ensure that they are the proper level and the piston should be in its top dead center position. The engine is then started by turning the start knob until the oil pressure rises to 28. The ignition and the air heater are turned on. The bowl selector is changed to the position where the warm-up fuel has previously been placed. The cylinder valves are lubricated and the engine is warming up until it reaches the working temperature, what usually takes around one hour. Before starting the analysis, the barometric pressure has to be checked to adjust the compression ratio compensation according to the standard table. Once calibrated, we'll go ahead with the sample. We must calibrate the engine in the same ON range that the sample we're going to analyze. To know approximately the octane number of our sample, we need to do a compression ratio sweep, always using the fuel-air ratio where maximum knocking is found and find the compression ratio value where the knockmeter shows 50. Then we can check the theoretical octane number according to our compression ratio using the tables from the ASTM D2699 and prepare a higher and lower standard, HPRF and LPRF, to bracket our sample. For this purpose, we're going to prepare different standards. One TSF, toluene standardization fuel, and two PRF, primary reference fuel. One ON higher than TSF, HPRF, and one ON lower than the TSF, LPRF. TSF is prepared with toluene, isooctane and N-heptane and has a similar behaviour than gasoline samples, being influenced by temperature. PRFs are prepared only with isooctane and N-heptane and are not sensible to temperature changes. Measuring this TSF by bracketing as if it would be a sample using the compression ratio for the TSF value according to the table in ASTM D2699. You can calibrate the knockmeter signal parameters and the air intake temperature. For example, for RON 95.0, LPRF would be 94.0 and HPRF would be 96.0. To have good results is really important find the correct fuel-air ratio for the mixture entering into the cylinder for each standard and sample to be measured.
After measuring the sample and both HPRF and LPRF standards, we obtain our result using NEXT calculation. Once the test is finished, the compression ratio is reduced to 520. The selector valve is settled to a medium position and all the bowls are emptied. The air heater and the ignition are turned off and finally the engine ignition. The operation of the MON analysis is very similar to the RON. There are some differences in the structure of the motor itself that make the results vary for the same sample with respect to the RON. The main difference are the revolutions at which the piston turns, being 600 RPM for the RON and 900 RPM for the MON. On the other hand, the MON also has an extra temperature control, the mixture heater, which controls the temperature of the gasoline and air mixture with a part that contains a resistance inside and that cannot be found in an engine with RON configuration. This temperature is controlled from the right panel. Unlike the RON, its standard temperature does not vary according to the barometric pressure, being always 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and it can be modified to calibrate the engine and making that the measurement of the TSF falls within the values required by the standard. On the other hand, in MON the air heater is always kept constant at 100 plus or minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Another peculiarity of MON is that the timing of the spark varies according to the compression ratio. As we can see in the image, the ignition timer is anchored to the cylinder assembly with a system that makes it rotate as it rises or falls, thus modifying the timing of the spark. Mm -hmm. 